Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? So I have these leftover pieces of wood and I could probably make some cutting boards out of them but rather than do that, what I thought I would do instead is make a lawnmower for my buddy Leo. He's only about eight months right now, a little early, but in four to six months he'll be ready for it. So I thought I'd make it now, maybe it'll make a nice Christmas present for him. So let's get started. I started by jointing the lumber, um, starting with the maple and then the sepal. And then I ripped it to the approximate widths that I needed, both the sepal and the maple. And then I jointed it again to have nice flat surfaces and then ran it through the planer. And once I had the wood to the dimensions that I wanted, I glued it up in the basement. I have a vise that's about 30 inches wide and the pieces that I cut were about 36 inches. So it was a pretty good size, pretty good fit. And then I cleaned up the glue with a damp rag so that I'd have to less to clean up afterward. It was a little bit stuck because I glued both pieces together. Um, so I had to knock it apart to get it totally separated. And then I ran it through the jointer to clean up the face. So I have the wood laminated in this direction. I've got two layers of, of maple and a layer of sepal in the middle to give it a nice contrast. Now what I want to do is slice it thinly in this direction, thin enough so that I can bend the wood into the proper form and then glue it together to, to create a bent lamination. Um, there's a couple of ways I can do that. One is on the table saw. But I think that's awfully dangerous to attempt because I want to cut layers that are likely going to be about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And to try to attempt that on the table saw I, I think is going to result in kickback, which is too dangerous. And I will probably get some uneven cuts as well, which would require me to sand it up anyway. So I'm going to use the band saw and that will give me a little bit of a rougher cut, um, but I'll be able to sand that up and then glue it together. I've created this attachment for the fence that I've uh, made out of MDF. It's just a flat piece of MDF that goes up about seven or eight inches high. And it's parallel to the blade. And I'm going to back it out. I've got a test piece that's three sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to bring this up to the blade and then back it off just a little bit because I want to have it a little bit thicker than that to allow for the sanding that I'll do afterward. So I've got the pieces cut out and sanded. I had two choices really to get rid of the saw marks. Either run them through the planer, and these are so thin, these ended up being about an eighth of an inch thin. Um, so they're so thin that I would have had to put them on a sled to go through the planer, uh, because the planer will not go that, that thin or that low. But because they're so thin, I was afraid I would get some chip out uh, from, the, from the planer. So I ran them through the drum sander instead, and I think that was a better option. If you have one, that's what I would do. So I've cut these three pieces of MDF. That's enough to cover the thickness of the strips of wood. And I've created a curve for the lawnmower piece. And uh, I'm gonna trace out the piece on the, on the first piece of MDF, cut it out on the bandsaw, and then use that as the pattern to trace out the other two pieces. I'll cut them all out, glue them together, and then sand it, and then that will become the mold that I will use for the glue up. One thing I didn't mention is after I glued the pieces together and before clamping them, I used a brad nailer just to keep the wood from sliding around. 
So the form is glued and now I just need to sand it smooth and then this will become the pattern for the other side that will be used for clamping. The forms are sanded up and I've also applied a layer of cork. That just helps to smooth out any irregularities and gives a nice tight uh, clamping pressure. Now I'm just gonna apply a layer of plastic to help protect it from the glue. Now it's time to apply the glue to the strip and I wanna make sure that I have ample glue. Okay, now I'll bring the form over, set the wood in place. Start with the easy end. In case you're wondering what I'm trying to make with the bent lamination, um, it's something like this. These are the pieces of the MDF that were cut off the form. And so this is going to be the handle, uh, or approaching up to the handle, and the wheels will be down here for the lawnmower with a little noisemaker in the middle. I only made one form. So the first half of this has been glued up, it's dried and it's ready to remove from the form and then I can put the other uh, strips in and glue them up. And there's our first piece. It'll need sanding definitely and some cleanup, but uh, it's, it's solid and it's bent. So now I'm using one form and only one form so that the other piece is exactly symmetrical, an exact duplicate of this. So we'll get out some fresh plastic and we will glue it up. So here are the two pieces when they come together it's starting to take shape. It definitely needs to be shortened for uh, a little boy who is one year old, a little bit more than one year old eventually. Um, but put a couple of wheels on it, some noisemakers, and we will have a lawnmower. Now I'm setting up a circle jig to use on the bandsaw to cut the wheels. So I've got two eight inch pieces, eight inch square pieces of sepo and I'm drilling a hole in the center of each piece and then I'll mount that on the circle jig. I've got a quarter inch bolt coming up through the center. I just put a knob on top to hold it in place with a washer so that it turns easily. And then I'll start cutting. It's actually pretty easy to cut a circle this way. And now I'm drilling four holes in each wheel for the dowels that are going to join the wheels together. Um, these dowels are kind of like pretend blades. And I'm using a half inch drill bit for the dowels. And then I'm cutting larger holes with, I think this was a one and a half inch Forstner bit. Um, this is just to give it a little bit of style and also to make the wheels a little bit lighter. And then I'm rounding it over all the edges of the outside circle and the inner circles. So here's our bent lamination. 
and I've got some pretty rough edges along, along the edge. So I'm gonna use my belt sander to smooth those down. There was a lot of glue residue, but it wasn't really that difficult to sand off. It just took a little bit of patience. Got the pieces ready for a dry fit. I've got two wheels and I've got some half inch dowel and I've got the holes drilled into the wheel. So I'm just gonna try and fit it together. I've sanded the dowels just a little bit on the ends to make sure that they fit. Still a pretty tight fit, but I think it's okay. So there we go. Um, so now what I need to do is to put some noisemakers in here, some little clackers, and the goal is to be able to drive Leo's parents absolutely nuts when he's pushing this around the house. So my goal is to try to make this out of leftover pieces of wood. And I think I have the ideal thing for the clackers. It's these little leftover pieces that I have from my kitchen stool project. Little oddly shaped pieces of wood that really wouldn't be of any use for much else. But they're a perfect fit, I believe. I'll have to test and see. But I think if I drill, these are half inch dowels, so if I drill a 5 8 inch hole up here somewhere and hang it on the dowel, put it inside like that, then when this rotates, it'll hit the rung down below and make a sufficient amount of noise. So let's give it a try. All right, so let's put these things on. One there. One there. One there. And one there. So it certainly makes noise, just like I wanted. Uh, one potential issue is this corner of the little triangular piece that hangs down below the wheel. So I think what I'll do is I'll trim those off so that there's no risk that it might damage a hardwood floor or, or hurt a child. So I'll trim those off. Um, and then I'm gonna think about what I can do to keep these positioned laterally so that they don't slide from side to side. So I'll think about that. Um, see what makes the most sense. So what I decided to do was to use little cross pins made out of quarter inch dowel. So now I'm cutting quarter inch holes perpendicular to the, to the larger dowels and I will insert one inch long quarter inch dowels into there. And here with the random orbit center I'm just rounding over the edges or the, or the ends of the pins. And now I'm drilling a 5 8 inch hole in the center of the wheel. I want it to have a, a loose fit around the quarter inch dowel that's going to be the, the axle. Now I'm gluing the pins in place. Um, it was nice having this syringe for the glue. It helped me to get into the tight space to insert a little bit of glue or inject a little bit of glue down into the quarter inch hole.
Now I'm trimming the bent laminated pieces to the proper length and then I'm going to round over the ends. I used a compass to draw out an arc for the round over and then the center point of that arc is where I will drill the hole for the axle. And I've got some one inch dowel and I'm gonna cut these just a half an inch long to serve as caps to go on the ends, little, little hub caps on the wheels. I glued the two laminated pieces together and forgot to film it. Um, so now I'm just cleaning it up with a sander. And now I've got a double thickness to round over at the handle end. I should have drilled the holes for the axles um, prior to glue up. I didn't think about it, so I built a little uh, workaround. And this is the handle end. Drilling a half inch hole for the dowel that's going to be inserted there. I'm using one inch dowel for the handles. Unfortunately, I don't have a lathe, um, primarily just because I don't have the room for it. So as a workaround, I had to use a little sanding wheel to shape the handles. A little bit of a workaround. Those of you who have lathes are probably laughing at me. But it, it turned out fine. It was just a little bit of extra work. Uh, it took a little bit longer. And then I used my belt sander to round the end of the handle. And then with a little bit of hand sanding at the end, they turned out to be actually not bad at all. Actually better than I expected that they would be. All right, let's do a dry fit of everything. And if it all fits correctly, then we'll glue it up. So I'll put these little axles in. Pin. Okay, that's in. And the handle, I've got a dowel inserted, and there we go. Let's take it for a test spin in the house and then. If everything's working well, then we'll glue it up. Everything fit really well, so I glued it up and I applied a single coat of tongue oil finish. It makes plenty of noise, so mission accomplished. So I gotta ask, would you make it? Thank you.